Okay. T91 freaking Andy today. Well, I won versus freaking Andy twice in a row the other day. So, ha ha ha. <laughs> so, actually, I don't even need to uh, do that in a roundabout way. Uh, let's take a look at the Magyar side because that's what we're looking at. Wait, this is 1100. Okay, this is a pretty uh, un imbalanced match. This must have been a long queue. Like 1K, sub 1K should be not the biggest match here. So what we're going to do is focus on your side here. These are just the two most recent um, recent replays. So yeah. Um, so Magyars. Let's think a little bit about what Magyars does. Magyars, they, their bonuses early are going to be cheap scouts and free forging. That's basically it. Probably because I'm still new. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, how many games do you have, by the way? Oh, it says right there. Oh, oh no, opponent is 15 games, but uh, yeah. Very new account from Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Magyars. Cheap scouts and free forging means that you're going to be opening scouts pretty much every game with Magyars. You could try and throw the opponent off with, like, men at arms or something, but it's, it's not the biggest uh, biggest brain move if you don't really know how to do it. Scout is, scouts is way easier to do, and it's just their standard because it's so good. 68 food scouts is insane. Um, oh, 13 games. Yeah, so there's going to be lots to learn. And, um, yeah, you said that you got to, like, 1,200, 1,300 already, so that's really good. Okay, so, so far so good. There's nothing really to say. Your scouting is good. The um, overall play is good. Two, two Woodline Vills cutting the corners. Um, you obviously know what you're doing here so far. Um, so yeah, in this matchup, Ethiopians, they do get free pikemen upgrades, so you do have to be concerned going into the mid game. Uh, if you just go full knights... He's going to have free pikemen. It's easy for him to add in pikes. So what is going to be good against the Ethiopian archers, which, well, he's likely going to do archers because they're faster firing, um, and pikemen? Well, there's a single unit that is good against both of those, and that unit is the skirmisher. And you know what synergizes really well with knights? Skirmishers. So knights and skirmishers is probably going to be your composition that you want to do in the mid game here. Of course, Magyar's post imp best composition is something like Magyar Hussar CA, but I think that you're okay to just play towards Knights and Skirms in the mid game, like in um, in the Castle Age, which means that your Feudal Age, if you go for like Scouts into Skirms, it synergizes really well with going into Skirms and Knights, because you'll have Skirms left over from Feudal that you can just upgrade. It's really strong. And as the Magyars, you don't have any kind of eco bonus, so you really don't want to be just chilling and ecoing. Ethiopians, they they get 200 free resources on the next age, so it's not like they really have an eco bonus either, but um, yeah, they do have a little bit of extra res to work with. And I think as Magyars, you're just good to go with uh, really aggressive plays in general. Losing the scout was really bad because, well, if you're trying to go scouts and you lose your first scout, that puts you back quite a bit in terms of like timing-wise. He's going to lose his scout as well, though, so that's good. Um, Just classic. <laughs> classic, classic. But it's worse for you than it is for him, because your scout is actually going to be a lot more useful. Skirms kill me every game. I mean, if... yeah, yeah, totally. No game audio? Um, Here. It might be just really quiet. Oh, oh I almost clicked the wrong one. There we go. Tell me if it's too loud. But, um, okay. So, we're up on 20, or, well, 19 bills, which is kind of standard timing. Good. Five seconds idle TC. Not too shabby at this level, though. Second Lumber Camp. Man, you, you are just playing really well so far. Still too quiet. Okay. Here. Um, actually, wait. It m might be a setting in my... Here, let me just check. Do I have a setting? No, it's just using desktop audio. Eh? Okay, we just put it to max. There we go. Uh, okay, there we go. That should hopefully be okay. That is at maximum levels. Gets rough once I get to late feudal and castle age. Yeah, 
So I can tell that you've practiced the early game, but obviously once the opponent does anything and you have to react, that's when the game gets a little tricky because you're not just following a recipe. Um, yeah, so opponent's up way too late. You should be able to punish this, but the problem is that you lost your starting scout, so it's a bit hard to punish. Um, yeah, but so far so good. I would say that um, your map is a bit hard to play just based on how all the resources are positioned. It's pretty far. So resource walling stuff in, really good. Now on this level, people aren't gonna be doing men at arms, but Ethiopians generally is gonna like to do men at arms archers. If the opponent went men at arms at a normal timing, you're actually dead because he just kills you. Because um, he just walks to your base with men at arms and kills your bills. But um, yeah, he's not doing that, so it's fine. Fast castle to Celo unless he's he doesn't go to gold. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, good. That's coming in. I, I like this. This guy for scouting is good. Opponent's not even up yet. And he lost his scout, so I hope the spearman goes forward and just sees what the opponent's doing because he needs some scouting. Got the scout in the queue right away. That's really good. We're not going to get housed at 25. Doing even better than my, uh, my 2k2 <laughs> in terms of remembering the house at 25. Okay. And Scout's gonna go forward, nice. Getting the walls, yeah, you kinda have to wall big like this, but it's fine, it's fine. All the way over there, they, these are pretty big walls. Like a higher level player is gonna punish you for making walls this big, but it's fine. Now we're focused on spending the wood here. So look, right, floating a little bit of wood. Yeah, pretty good. You have another villi- yeah, there we go, okay. I mean, really good, right? Running into the spear, but it happens, it happens. Um. Okay, nice. And yeah, she can. Basically, yeah, all of Feudal Age is just having the rally point set stragglers and then making farms, which is exactly what you're doing, which is really good. Good to see. There's a free pickoff. Dude, you're, you're, oh my God, this, this is like 1500 gameplay. This is not 1100. What is this? <laughs> you're gonna improve really quickly, by the way. Are you coming from a different game or something? Like StarCraft? Feels like your mechanics are just really good in general. Um, okay, free forging just goes a long way here. New 1k ELO standard is different now. Yeah, yeah, what is this? There we go. Getting the walls going. Okay. Nice, that's gonna be another vill. A high level player could maybe save this with quick walls and just running to the spear, but... I mean, look, look, literally like two, two hits and it's dead because of forging. And um, yeah, that's that's so good. This this level is much higher, yeah. Diamonds, ADC in League of Legends. Okay, yeah. So you're gonna be fast. And I mean, ADC is pretty good because uh, you actually have to hit your basic attacks, whatever they're called in that game, which requires skill. <laughs> uh, all right. Floating a bit of wood here, but what that usually is spent on at the end of Feudal Age is a market. So a market here, and we don't have a blacksmith yet, so maybe like a blacksmith here. This fill's been idle for a while, but... So that just means you're not hitting your idle, t idle villager button. You want to be hitting that um, idle villager button a lot. Yeah, you're microing this, which is great, but... Uh, yeah, there's a few things we're missing. Like a minute on this guy. But you're pretty quick at fixing those idles here. Market's gonna plug this hole right here. Actually, no, it's five tiles, so you need a little bit more, but um, okay. Still keeping this alive, oh my god. Oh yeah, market, not here, not here. This is such a good building to put on the wall because it's four by four tiles. So buildings in this game are pretty much indestructible in a lot of situations, so it's just, you really wanna build them as part of the walls. I mean, not indestructible, but they, they're really hard to get through. Because you can always just repair them wall behind. Idle TC is a bang of my six existence. Yeah. Yeah, it's just making sure to keep um, hitting that TC button. While you're doing the microing, you have to be able to keep the TC running. So, if you, even if, even though you got two kills, it's like you idled for three bills. Yeah, the opponent idled for two bills as well, but still. Opponent's hitting way too slow. It's just at this elo, it's, it's kind of expected. Yeah. And see, our problem is we're going into range. Well, actually, no, it's fine. Skirms, as I said, are going to be good. Never mind. We didn't go for a range. I thought you were going to go for like a second range. Maybe it's actually good at this point. I forgot that you didn't actually play um, 
uh, scouts into skirms, which I think scouts into skirms would have been good because you would have just you would have done a lot more damage. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to push him back. The, the, I don't like that you're going CA though. Bloodlines tells me you want to go CA, and CA actually kind of dies to crossbowmen in this situation. Opponent is just lower elo though, so uh, you will just be able to do anything. Just did one range of skirms, okay, and then you're gonna go knights, okay. You want to be careful about building two unit types at the same time, though, um, because each unit type requires a different set of upgrades. So it's like if you're gonna go for um, if you're gonna go for skirms, you need to build all skirms with upgrades. Then you add the knights and after. If you're gonna go knights, you go all knights with the important upgrades, and then you add skirms after. You can't go like some skirms, some knights with like half upgrades because then both units are useless because you don't have proper upgrades. Just in general. Obviously, sometimes it's okay, but in general. Um, when CA, yeah, yeah, this is just a strategic issue. You you get the feel for what's good str strategy-wise um, after some games, but well, it looks like you're playing knights here though, which is good. That's all we need. Oh yeah. So one tip for eco management, on the way to the next age, you wanna be rebalancing your economy. So this is when you reach. So right here is where you click, pretty much. Right here. So as soon as you click up, okay, what do we need on gold? What do we need on food? What's the strat? The strat is to go two stable knights. Okay, so we need 10 on gold. You need 14 to maintain two stables or 12 with gold mining. But since you're floating gold on the way up, it's like 10 on gold is good. So you could go for a second mining camp here. It's probably what you kind of have to with this orientation. Sometimes you can stick with one, but in this situation, a second mining camp with four more vills on that. And then you can spam vills or spam scouts or knights for longer. So you have two vills here. Um, I would just take some from lumber or something. Not nine or 10, nine or 10 is good. Yeah, that's always what I say. 15 to 17 farms and nine or 10 on gold will give you the perfect economy balance for just making knights on two stables. And then you add TCs after. It's really good. So you just didn't have enough gold on up because you only have five on gold here. You, you can make a few knights, but not really enough. And see, we're floating two, or we're floating a lot of uh, food because we had 18, no, 19 farms. So. 19 is just too many. You want to be more in the ballpark of like 15 to 17. 19 is good if you're going three stables, but you would have need to go on up to the castle age a little bit later than 37 bills um, if you're going to go for three stables. Wondering, can you go two range CA with mag guards? It's produced faster on this matchup, of course. Well, yeah, I think that you you can definitely justify two, two range CA if you're booming. Um, maybe you, you just want to harass enemy wood lines or something while you're booming on three TCs. Could be okay. okay. Nice. This will be a good fight. Yeah, you won't even lose a single unit if you just pull this guy back. Oh, oh, oh he died. Yeah. Pulling that guy back for healing is, is always good. But yeah, this is where you need to be adding TCs. There we go. First TC, second TC on gold. Where's your gold? Right here. That's your next TC location. 100% has to be. Um, I mean here, but well here there's there's deer, so you could take deer here, but this is the better spot. And you're gonna be floating enough for it here, so you just make it. There we go. Since you would, yeah, 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 instead of three, exactly. But you still have less overall. You did gold left for the third TC. Yeah, that's fine as well. I would have taken this one just because it's it's got the wood here. Um, Siege Workshop forward, all right. Nice. Well, it looks like you've been following some guides because this looks uh, this looks really solid so far. The the thing is that the opponent's quite a bit lower elo, so it's kind of hard to get a read on what a more even match would be. But yeah, knights counter all. Knights knights actually kill all until you get to kind of like 1300, 1500. Then, then knights don't just counter all, but honestly, just knights counter all at this level. That's fine. Okay. And CA, CA is fine. It's just Magyars have their only bonus is that their uh, ranges train them faster here. Eventually, you get recurve bow though. That's kind of a late game tech, so you don't really think about that right now. 
and CA is kind of expensive. Thumb ring's really expensive. So what thumb ring does is it makes your guys fire a bit faster and also have 100% accuracy as in they, they shoot exactly where the target is. They're still gonna miss it, unless you get ballistics on moving targets, but it's pretty expensive for what it's gonna do here. So I, I would probably skip thumb ring in this situation and invest into bodkin arrow, uh, even hand cart, I don't know. Um, like, it is good to get, but you just don't have the CA numbers to really justify it yet. For training, you should use me or leave it or move all the train against... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Can get somebody for ch from chat to, to come in for that. That could be really good. It's the point of the game where I get lost on what to do next. Yep. So, 70, 70 villagers or 30 farms. That's roughly about when I'm thinking I want to go to, to Imp. So, if I'm on 70 bills and I don't have 30 farms... That means I need to spend more wood on farms. So, aka, you need to select like 11 bills, whatever, and just build a bunch of farms here. Then you can go imp. So you have map control with military, but you could have pushed, you definitely could have pushed and probably won here. More mangonels pushing here. Could have been good. You, you had a lot of army kind of chilling, right? So any army that's that you produce that's not doing anything is basically like floating resources, somewhat. Um, not exactly, but... Any military that you you make, you want to be using as soon as possible. The longer that you wait to use your military, the less relatively valuable they are. Like, two militia at the start of the game, amazing. Two militia right now, useless. So, basically, the longer your army sits, the less good they kind of are, um, just overall. Unless you're adding more units and snowballing them. But you kind of made a bunch of army, and then you sat. If you The idea is that you make a bunch of army... You make technologies, and then you attack. That that should be sort of the basic flow of how you're spending your resources. What did that horse do to you? Well, sometimes you got to get rid of them so you don't misclick. <laughs> They're annoying. Um, but yeah, this wood spend. This is this is what's really holding us back here in the mid-game. It's just... Honestly, just turn on auto rec. Oh, it is on. Um, yeah, we should be on 30 farm. Oh my god, you're just going to buy it. Yeah, just sell all the wood. Whatever. It hurts your economy a lot to do that, but it, yeah, you really need to go up, so. I'd even maybe sell like 100 stone just to get up. Do we have prereqs? We have this and this, yep. So yeah, just getting up fast. We want to get a castle kind of here, because his gold is here. So here or this hill is really good too. This hill kind of covers both, but this hill allows you to push here a bit easier. You have to think, okay, where are my trebs going to go when I build a castle? If I get a castle here, trebs can go here and they're safe, so they can kill that. If I go here, traps can only really go here to be safe, and they don't really hit anything. So, this hill is somewhat better because you can push a bit more forward. Now, opponent is, again, he's just a bit lower level, so he's going to get wrecked here, most likely. Um, but yeah, the wood spending in the mid-game going to be a little bit of an issue. I would say that your micro is better than even 1800 level. Y your micro is is already, like, high level. So don't worry about learning how to micro your, your units because you'll just naturally like learn that as you play more games. You don't really need to think about it. Um, you just use logic. Like obviously, if you're playing League of Legends, like you know you know how to be efficient with your your attacks. Um, so what we want to be working on is economy balance and making sure that we have a a strategy that makes sense that's specific to this game. Hindsight, I probably should have done Siege on this hill, too. Yeah, you don't really want to be camping areas so much, though. You camp areas with castles, basically. And then you, the whole point of going cavalry is that you have mobility. So with mobility, what can you hit? You can hit these with CA. You can hit down here with your CA. So chilling in the middle of the map, just you're kind of not getting as much use out of your units as you would like. Um, but obviously the, what's really important for you to work on is the eco management side. It's not even that bad as well. Uh, but that's where you can really see a lot of improvements is just never let the wood count go over. Well, whatever you would consider to be a lot. Um, you want to have the wood count as close to zero as possible at all times, at all times. And that's, that's, uh, indicative of good macro. Uh, good economy ma management is how low the wood count is. 
The Ethiopian have helps upgrade free. Uh, they did on launch, I'm pretty sure, but it was too OP, so they got rid of that. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and by the way, ballistics is an insane upgrade. Ballistics hitting moving targets is like just great. It's it's such a key upgrade for ranged units. So yeah, you definitely want to get that. Um, but yeah, you're up, but guess what? You you don't have a castle on the hill. If you had a castle on the hill here, you're making trebs and you're killing his base. But you never got the castle on the hill, and that's why um that's why you can't push right now. So you have all this military. But yeah, you're you're definitely lost now. So obviously you're you're still super ahead in the game. Probably uni at this point, get it. Well, you don't really need the university that bad well you need it for ballistics yeah but you don't need chemistry really because you don't have um you don't have gunpowder with this sieve anyways getting heavy ca heavy ca is like the lowest priority tech by the way so usually the unit upgrade techs are the least effective well not not always but the imperial age techs are just very expensive so a lot of the time you want to get the blacksmith techs first um for example, you want to get Bracer as the priority here. Because Heavy CA gives you like an attack and does it give a melee armor or something and some HP? But Bracer gives an extra range and an attack, which is really important. So Heavy CA is like 900, 500, like 900 food, 500 uh, gold. So it's just really expensive. Um, those resources could have been invested into a lot of other things that would have been more useful at this time. Okay, there's a good castle, but yeah, it, obviously you could have had like four trebs already, just killing his entire base at this point. Um, okay, so at some point you want to look at your resources and be like, oh wow, I'm floating a lot of food. Maybe I should make some hussar. It's pretty good. And micro the units in the front. Yo, yeah, this this guy knows how to micro, that's for sure. And his macro is not so bad. So, yeah, we're going to see some improvement very quickly. Good job sending these up here. But again, like, he's super exposed everywhere. All you need to do is just figure out where his stuff is and just send some units. Like, you know his guys are here. Let's just send a few units on this side, a few units coming here. And you pick them apart like that. That's how you use mobility. So... Yeah, you can use this composition to, to push the front. Oh, yeah, he's going to call it. But this kind of composition is great when you're hit, going the sides. You hit the sides, sometimes the center. But, you know, if his army's here, you go over here. If his army's down here, you go up here. Stuff like that. Um, Sieging, of course, is a little bit different. I actually have a video on how to attack. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's called How to Attack Your Opponent. And uh, look it up on YouTube. That's going to really help um, in terms of formulating a game plan for how you're going to actually want to use your units to attack the opponent. Um, but yeah, from, from this, it just kind of looks like spending the wood a little bit better on farms, learning the, the upgrades a little bit better. Um, but of course, the opponent was a little bit lower level, so it was a little bit inevitable here. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the second replay in just a moment here. Oh my god, what was this? <laughs> this is the oh this was the scout micro i'm pretty sure 100 <laughs> percent. there we go all right 